Um, and as you mentioned, this is a 20 minute break. So it's plenty of time to, you know, do some Q&A during the break with uh, Nikhil. So Nikhil, if you want to unmute yourself and like try to answer questions verbally, that will be also fine during the break. Uh, sure, I guess I, I think I answered one of them. Uh, the, the, there was a question about whether we've tried to uh, accelerate the FFTs using GPUs. Uh, we wrote most of the FFT code pre-GPU support in Chapel, and so we never quite closed the loop in seeing whether we could speed it up on the GPU. Uh, but that's an that's an interesting question, uh, but we haven't actually tried to do that. Thanks, Nikhil. Um, not keeping up with the chat. What was the other question that was asked on chat and maybe answered on chat as well? Uh, there was a question on the largest FFT size we did. Uh, and so, I just, and, and sort of the amount of time, uh, and I just pointed out that we've sort of been running, you know, I think the largest grids we've ever run are 4096 cubed, uh, for some of our, you know, early test run and, and scaling runs Our traditional runs are between. 512 and 1024 cube, but we run a whole lot of them all the time. So, you know, it, there's a lot of throughput. Uh, the other piece was each time step is, you know, off the order of three to five, uh, two to three FFTs uh, and inverses. Uh, and we are running, you know, 10 to the five ish time steps. Nikhil, I, I have a physics question for you if you'll entertain it during our break here. Um, with, I mean, those are maybe the best questions. I don't know, uh, but with the with the um, the ultra light um, dark matter um, ultra light dark matter particles, are they uh, are they just so weakly interacting that they're like here with us in the in the galaxy that we can uh, you know reach out and touch, but we just can't notice them? Or are they only existing sort of out, like in, in the region that is far away from us? No, they're incredibly weakly interacting. So, you know, they're sitting around uh, all around us. Uh, the, you know, the, you, you, and so, you know, but we just don't interact with them. Uh, there are searches which, try, you know, the, their searches which try to find these things by sort of waiting for the rare interaction to happen. Uh, uh, basically have one of these particles. Uh, so, you know, the depending on the different particles, you have different ways of searching for them. Uh, but all of them tend to be very weakly interacting. Otherwise, we'd have seen them. So the, the only place you sort of see their interactions is gravitationally, which is why you sort of have to get out to an astrophysical scale to see them. Okay, cool. Thanks. Nikhil, there's one more question in the chat. Uh, I can read yeah. it out loud. Uh, I will pile on a physics question. My brain did not like the gravitational factor in the Schrodinger equation. Is that typical in dark matter work? That's a that's a that's a good that's an excellent question. So you know the 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 term that uh, Kevin I think is pointing out is this this odd uh, potential term that shows up. Uh, it, it's that's an effective equation, and so uh, you know the the gravitational potential that 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 modified Schrodinger equation shows up in these astrophysical contexts. It doesn't ever show up in a standard quantum mechanical piece, uh, and you know you can derive where that comes from, but that would that you know the the the, the version that you're seeing there is sort of an effective approximation to that. To the to the underlying physical system, but it you know it's a good approximation, and so it's a much easier thing to solve than uh, trying to solve the full uh, underlying system for the kinds of cases we're considering. 